Hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is a recording um, for the the parent preview night. So I'm just going to give you a, a sense of of the middle school, and hopefully, uh, when I'm done here, uh, you'll you'll have a real good sense of of just how uh, amazing our middle school is. And then, of course, at the end, I'll have some contact information for you. So if you would like to um, reach out to me or, or schedule a time to chat, uh, we can certainly do that. So uh, without further ado, let me kind of push forward here. So a little bit about me. <clears throat> um, I've been married uh, 28 years uh, and over 28 years. And uh, my wife, Nicole, is a, is a high school principal uh, in a large public school district here in town. Um, and uh, then my kids, my son Jeffrey is a chemistry major. He actually wants to be a high school chemistry teacher and eventually get his PhD in chemistry. Uh, and, and he is at Calvin University in, um, in Michigan. And he's actually gonna be an RA um, uh, this coming school year. So we're pretty excited about that. And then Kara is a freshman at Trinity Christian College in Chicago, Illinois, and she is studying to be a nurse. And she is um, she's also a soccer player uh, at Trinity, uh, and their season is now underway. They they had their first game uh, yesterday. This is being recorded on uh, on the uh, on February sixth, twenty twenty one. So their first game was was yesterday, was Friday. Um, so anyway, super proud of them and um, just uh, just great kids, wonderful, amazing wife. Um, pretty blessed, pretty blessed. A little bit about, so that's about me. So a little bit about uh, the middle school team. Um, my middle school team's amazing. They are truly, truly middle school people. Um, they... Uh, it's not like, oh, I'm an elementary school teacher and I'm, like, and I'm okay, I'll teach middle school for a while. They, they deeply believe in teaching middle school and um, loving middle school students uh, where they're at. And um, they're, they're deeply faithful. They, they work uh, daily on their own personal walk, which makes them um, more able to walk alongside our students as they walk their journey um, as they make their faith their own. So my middle school team is unbelievable. They're always trying to, to grow and be better. And uh, they love collaborating with one another. They love hanging out with one another. They're just, it's just an awesome group to be around. So I'm, I'm blessed. I don't know what to say. They're just incredible. So I'm going to walk through kind of six parts of the middle school experience. Um, First and foremost, uh, you've got the social emotional development of, of, our, of our students. And this is such a, a, an interesting time in their life. I mean, they, <clears throat> they really, sometimes they wanna be 25 and sometimes they just wanna be five. And then sometimes they'll land at 11 and 12 and 10 and 14 or whatever, 13. Um, but their brains and their bodies are doing backflips right now. And that's a lot to manage. Uh, it, it's a lot of energy, um, literally a lot of, uh, a lot of calories are being burned. Uh, I remember when my own kids were going through that. Um, that's a lot of work uh, just to be them on a daily basis, let alone interact with others and um, learn. And so it's just a lot just to be them. And right now, their their frontal lobe, um, right up in here, their their the CEO of the brain is is kind of still in development, um, and they're all at different phases. The limbic system is still developing, and and they are truly ruled by their impulses. Um, their peer pressure is a big deal because their friends are becoming more and more uh, important in their life. <clears throat> and then their emotions, their emotions are right at the surface of their skin. Um, they either can laugh or cry or be mad at any second. And sometimes all three within five minutes of each other. 
And so helping them manage that is, is one of our greatest challenges um, as well. A lot of the times they tend to overthink um, uh, uh, about what others think about them. Uh, so they, they, they might take a look the wrong way or a comment the wrong way. Um, they just tend to overthink it and they perseverate on it. Um, and so that's really, that can be really difficult too uh, for them. Uh, so trying to help them manage that is something that we, we work really hard at as well. Um, so again, th that part of managing and interpreting social situations can be really difficult. Uh, they'll misread maybe what a teacher says or what a parent or guardian says. Uh, they'll get angry for no apparent reason, at least in our mind, for no apparent reason. For them, it makes total sense. Um, and again, they misunderstand their peers. They might get a little anxious in a social situation, especially if you're new to, to a friendship group or you're new to Denver Christian, or if you're not new to Denver Christian, it can be really difficult. Um, and then of course, all, all that sort of can, can kind of filter up to the top and then, and then they cry, um, they get emotional. Uh, and so then, then they're vulnerable, right? And so trying to manage that and help them with that, um, but that's a lot, a lot of the times where the connections can be made is when they're at their most vulnerable, they're open to saying, boy, what, what can I do to, to improve on this or be better or learn from that? Um, so anyway, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, even though in the moment it feels really challenging. And then of course the cognitive development, right? We're a school, it's, we need to learn and we need to be prepared um, for the future um, in, in that piece. So, um, Right there, that picture, these students are, are working on um, some research papers, those are eighth graders. And that's a lot of work. Uh, we, we ask them to write and Mrs. Naylor pushes them really hard um, to write. And Mrs. Robertson in sixth grade uh, is building that foundation so that when they hit eighth grade, they can write uh, even better. And then our high school really um, has a high demand in writing. And I know that my two kids, they can flat out write. They they can express themselves, whether my son is writing a chemistry paper or my daughter's reflecting uh, in one of her religion classes uh, in college. Uh, I know that my kids can write and in large part due to the, the elementary development, the middle school development there, and then of course the, uh, the high school development. So a couple of things that are a little bit different about, we change classes. So in elementary school, you might have one or two teachers uh, in the middle school, you'll have more than that. Uh, you'll have kind of a, a specialist uh, for each, each core, uh, including Spanish. Uh, and then the specials, uh, we push the kids through each special. We believe in that whole child piece. And we believe that PE and art and band, music and STEM, those are just as important as English, science, social studies, and math. Um, no question about it. it. It all kind of it's that whole brain, that whole child that develops that whole kid. Um, and the sixth grade all the way up, we have an eighth grader right now taking algebra two. Uh, they actually are online, uh, but they also have the option of going to our high school as well to take those classes. So we do have some students. I've got um, some sixth graders taking seventh grade math. I've got seventh graders in eighth grade math. I've got eighth graders in algebra one and geometry. We, we try and meet them where they're at. Um, and so that's really important. And then technology, we believe that enhances our program. We do ask that each student bring, uh, bring their own device, a laptop. Uh, most of our students have Chromebooks. Um, some of our students have uh, MacBooks and then some of course have PC laptops. And the, the range is from A to Z in terms of the cost. We don't need a really expensive device um, at all. Uh, we, we need the students to get into the Chrome browser for the most part. And then within that, we can do a lot of work. We're a Google school. Um, and then we need to do a lot of heavy lifting. We can provide some extra machines for that. And then cell phones, we don't, we don't allow the students to use their cell phones during the day. Um, they use them before school when they arrive. And, and frankly, immediately when the last bell rings, uh, they're on their phones. Um, we just, we just don't use them. We have a couple of classes, um, like one of our elective online classes is a photography class. So in that case, our students use their phones for that, for a camera. 
Um, but for the most part, uh, we don't use those. And then um, we also support our students and enrich our students uh, using our learning labs. We have a literacy lab and a math lab. The math lab is both for enrichment and support. So you might have a student that needs some extra support uh, on a particular unit or lesson. So they might um, go there in their study hall and get that extra one-on-one -on -one attention. Uh, the, the, it is staffed by a licensed uh, math teacher. He's incredible. Um, he's patient. He's very, very bright. He's very, very great. Uh, uh, he's terrific at explaining and working one-on-one -on -one with our students. He's just awesome, Mr. Gaysink. Um, and then Literacy Lab, um, Mrs. Wanders works with our students, um, does some independent book talks, but works with our teachers on research papers. But if you just need a little bit of extra time spent um, going over a research paper, um, she also helps our high school students with like their college essays and stuff. So she's, she is terrific. And then we provide um, uh, some different opportunities to celebrate learning. Spelling, uh, COVID, a lot of this stuff is shut down, but Math Olympiad, Speech and Debate and Spelling Bee just basically didn't happen. Um, and then the National Junior Honor Society, we're, we're kind of working to try and figure out where that fits in our program too. But in non-COVID years, um, we do have those Spelling Bees, the Math Olympiads um, mm -hmm. and uh, the Speech and Debate. And we're looking to put the Speech and Debate uh, inside our elective program and provide a little bit more uh, opportunity for our students there. Faith formation, of course, one of our pillars, we're a Christian school, we deeply believe in that. So this is certainly one of our pillars. Uh, so in an effort to, to be even better uh, in this particular pillar, uh, we are, um, we spent a year ago, we spent some time researching this, this uh, program called Teaching for Transformation. Um, we've all, we've, we've been a school over a hundred years and we've done teaching and learning, uh, with faith integration really, really well. Um, but what we wanted to do was how can we make it better? And so what we did was, um, research this program, hundreds, hundred plus schools are using this program. And basically what it does is it provides some consistency all the way up preschool through 12th grade. And um, it, it causes our teachers to really dive in and say, what do I want my students to know um, 25 years from now, remember 25 years about, uh, uh, ago about their experience in my classroom. So it provides some consistent language from preschool to kindergarten to first grade, all the way up through elementary, middle and high. And that consistency around faith formation will help the students, especially as they enter middle school, make that faith their own. And then, and then really that just blossoms uh, through high school, but it provides that real nice vertical alignment consistency um, uh, through their experience at Denver Christian. So we're really looking forward to uh, seeing what that does. Right now, what we're doing is we've got some early adopters working on it. So there's about 15 of our elementary, middle, and high, um, so 15 total. Uh, and then our administrators, me included, are working through this first year of training. And then come the fall of 2021, this year, all of our staff is going to walk through this training. So we've got some extra professional development days uh, for the 21-22 school year. So we're really looking forward to seeing what that, how that kind of just takes on uh, that consistency and builds on that consistency. Consistency. Really excited about that. Other ways that we develop faith formation is through trips and service. So our sixth graders go to the Great Sand Dunes. Um, our seventh graders go to Idrahaji, uh, Camp Idrahaji up in the mountains. And that's the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Both those trips are the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday prior to Labor Day weekend. And then our eighth graders are this spring. It's typically a fall trip, but this, this because of COVID, we're doing it in the spring. The Black Hills, we're going in April this year, but typically we're going to make that a fall trip. And then we do different service projects, leaf raking. This, this year, we raked about 92 lawns in one day for those that can't do it. Uh, and then we just do different stuff through our Explorer program, uh, which will turn into an electives program 
Uh, and then we're TAs, we're teachers assistants uh, in our elementary building, not this year because of COVID. So we send about 20 students a week downstairs uh, to be teachers assistants and be the hands and feet of Jesus for our, our preschoolers and with small groups or cut out letters for our third grade teachers or, or whatever. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a neat enrich, uh, enriching experience. And then of course, physical development. Um, we celebrate that our, that God created our bodies to move. And um, we just, we believe of course in physical education, but also sports. Um, we believe in that our body was created to move. And so we try and provide as many opportunities to do that as possible. One of the ways that we do that is through our athletic program. So um, sports starts with our sixth graders um, so that you can see the sports there. Um, it's a great program. Our philosophy is um, we're not developing, our, our purpose is not to develop division one athletes. Um, that's not our purpose at all. Our, our purpose is to provide an opportunity for our students to participate in an athletics program. Um, and try something new and different. Um, using my own kids as an example, my daughter, at the same time she was playing middle school soccer, she spent a year with the U.S. National uh, Training Program. Um, uh, she, it was a nine-month tryout. Uh, 300, 400 kids started the tryouts, and she made it to the final 22, but she wanted to play for her team, her school, and so at the same time she's playing at this high level, um, she also played for her, for her middle school, um, and to play for your school, to have Denver Christian across your Jersey and representing your school and seeing your classmates on game day and having them wish you good luck and having them come to the, to your games and cheering you on. I mean, that's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And so having that opportunity, uh, to do that. Um, is awesome. And then on the flip side, there's might be, she, she probably had a teammate where that was her very, that was that person's very first soccer game ever. So what a great opportunity for my daughter to kind of shepherd them along and lead and encourage. Um, and same with volleyball and basketball. My son was, he's a pretty good basketball player. He's voted all state um, coaches association, all state team. And, and so, but he was on the same court as uh, uh, players who they had never played before in their life. And so again, what a great opportunity for him to kind of bring that along. And then the golf program, my son just took up golf because it was available and um, he had no idea what he was doing, but he wanted to try it. And he ended up playing all through high school and had an unbelievable experience. And then he also tried track. I think as a sixth grader, he's like, I want to do track dad. Awesome. Let's do it. So he did track. He had never done that before. It was great. So great. So anyway, we, we really want to do that in the physical piece. So transitioning over here to creative development, you can see that's the picture of one of our art rooms. Uh, pretty amazing place for creative, uh, for the creative juices to flow. Uh, Mrs. Dar Bartz does an unbelievable job uh, there, uh, giving our kids all kinds of different ways to be creative and, and show, show their art. So uh, there's also other ways. We have performing arts. Um, you'll see the worship team down there in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, that's such a popular thing. We can't do it this year because we can't meet in chapel in our big groups, but that's a popular place to be. And, and um, so in fact, our worship band was so big that we had to break it up into multiple bands. So they kind of rotated through and um, one of the electives is choir, so if kids want to sing, but we do require the kids to take a music, so they can take general music, um, band, or choir. We have some students that love it so much they do band and choir, so we, we provide that space, and um, the drama, we provide that, so uh, right now, as at, at this recording, we are starting a Shakespeare club, um, after school Shakespeare club that'll that'll culminate into uh, recording something for the Shakespeare Festival in Denver uh, at the end of April. Non-COVID year, we'd actually go to the Shakespeare Festival. We can't do that, um, so it'll be a recording, but what an awesome experience. Uh, another way that the kids can share 
and be creative and also kind of tie into the physical development is we have um, a couple of after school fencing clubs, which is really cool. Um, and another way just to try something different. Um, <clears throat> our electives program, we've got a couple of hundred classes that we've offered over the years. Uh, you can see some are listed there. That bottom right hand picture is actually our mountaineering explorer. So uh, we take a day off of school and we summit uh, Gray's Peak. And so we've done that every year. COVID, we didn't do that this year, but we'll certainly do it um, hopefully this fall, fall 21. So uh, again, all different kinds of ways. We've done sign language and journals and chess and fly fishing, sports, computer coding, all different kinds of things for the kids to express uh, their creativity. And then personal development. Um, each, each of our students, we share this with them all the time. They are uniquely created um, in the image of God, perfectly created. They're exactly how God wants them to be. Uh, otherwise, they would be different. But this is how God wants them to be. And so we try and provide them ways to think about um, just their personal. What do I want to do when I grow up? What do I want to how do I want to grow in this area? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? How do I grow both? And so we provide uh, as much opportunity for them to be different uh, and express their, their differences uh, as much as possible. So communication, here's some different ways that we communicate um, with, with you and you with me and you with us. Uh, you'll see in that upper left-hand corner uh, that larger picture, it says, seek, pursue, embrace, honor. That's actually a screenshot of our website. Uh, that is updated every weekend. Um, it's got all kinds of things. It's got a link. If you're new to Denver Christian Middle School, uh, Canvas, which is our learning management system. It has links to our different activities, uh, bell schedule, dining, grateful plate. Obviously, the bottom left hand is uh, Gmail. And then the upper right hand corner, we do kind of de morning devotions, the Monday morning message on uh, every Monday. Uh, the link is connected to that website. I encourage you to watch that video that I make every morning. Uh, our students um, our students watch that video every Monday morning. It's kind of a synopsis of what's coming at them for the week. Some reminders about the calendar, who's on our opportunity to serve the OTS team, which does our dining hall cleanup crew. And then the remind, each uh, grade level has their own remind group that I put you in. We send links out, important links out, um, quotes, encouraging moments, encouraging things. Every once in a while, I send out a picture, um, but you'll be asked to join that, that uh, remind group uh, for your particular grade level. So anyway, those are just the communication pieces that we use to keep you informed um, because we, we believe, uh, deeply in, in that kind of two-way communication. Um, and then let me just pause here. Uh, this is the Great Sam Dunes trip. Uh, I just wanted to give you some sense of, of what this trip will look like. It's missing the date here. I apologize for that. Um, it's September 1 this year. Uh, and so September one, so we'll leave from Denver Christian um, and we'll camp at Pinion Flats Campground. We'll have a campfire and it's, it's a great first day. And then that second day, we're going to be in the National Park, hiking, sandboarding on the dunes uh, in the morning, have lunch right there. And then we'll go to Zapata Falls and hike some reflection time there. It's beautiful. If you've never been there, I highly recommend it. It's incredible. And then again, we'll have that campfire time, some reflection, some devotional time. And then that third day, we'll get up and have some breakfast, service project, and then head back to school. And we arrive right around Carline, uh, maybe a little bit later. Uh, depends on traffic on the way back up um, from there. It's a bit of a drive, but um, it's incredible. It's a great trip, especially when you know, you're, you're blending either fifth grade groups to get together that are currently a DC or, or new students and just bringing them all together. And it's such a great way to spend time together and get to know each other um, right out of the gate. It's awesome. Um, so uh, that's my contact information. You'll see my email there, uh, my phone number. It's my office number. And at the bottom there is a link. 
uh, it's, it, it connects to my calendar so you can book a time with me. So uh, rather than us spending four or five emails, does this work? How about 1030 Thursday? No, I'm booked there. But, you know, that kind of thing. You just go on there and you'll, you'll find a window of opportunity there to connect. Uh, it automatically sends me an email, uh, hits my calendar. Then if all of a sudden something falls through or I've got to reschedule, I'll reach out to you and we'll do that. Right now I'm doing them in Zoom um, and, and not in person. Uh, so I, I prefer that. I actually even prefer Zoom over phone, uh, just so we can kind of look at each other. Um, I've re I'm really finding that that's, that's been a great way to connect. Um, if you're uh, new to Denver Christian, you're still exploring Denver Christian, these are our two amazing admissions folks, uh, Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. DeBoer there. Um, so if you're exploring Denver Christian, please you know, reach out to them. Uh, you'll see the website at the bottom there uh, that gives you a little more detail on the admissions process. If you've not shadowed with us, um, I highly recommend that. And, and again, that goes through our admissions department with Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. DeBoer. Uh, they'll schedule those. Um, but also, even if you haven't had a tour, it, it is scheduled through that. Um, those are not scheduled through me because uh, the uh, Mrs. DeBoer and Mrs. Johnson um, kind of lead those. So anyway, I hope that gives you some sense of the amazing place that is Denver Christian Middle School. Uh, it's, it's an unbelievable place. Uh, and, and we love walking alongside your students uh, as they journey through what can be a little bit of a challenging time. Doesn't have to be. It can be a lot of celebration too. So anyway, uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And uh, God bless, and I look forward to seeing you uh, down the road.